There's thousands of Minecraft hacks that are posted online every single day. Today, I'll be testing over 162 Minecraft hacks so you know if they're real or if they're clickbait. By the way, I also hid six hidden letters throughout this video. And if you find all six letters, it spells a secret code word that only the elite gamers will find. Good luck. Well, here we are in Minecraft 1.20 snapshot version, but apparently there's completely new spawn eggs. So let's see if this guy was lying to us or not. Let's type it in. Apparently there's a wither spawn egg. Oh. Wait, what's this? Oh, monster spawner. Well, that's new, but I don't see the wither spawn egg. No, dude, there's just a wither skeleton. There's no wither spawn egg. Now, this, the spawner itself is new, but that is clearly fake. But there's a few more. It says there's also iron golem. Oh, <gasps> there are snow golem spawn eggs. And the last one says there could be ender dragon. I don't see that. So there's no boss spawn eggs. It looks like they just added two new golems. Why does the iron golem egg look like this? First myth though, I'm gonna say halfway busted because frankly, half it worked, half it didn't. Now, this Reddit user came in with a post that came up with a ton of different Minecraft bugs in 1.20. We gotta test them all to see if he's lying. Like that's supposed to create a hanging sign. Why is it not an option? Did they remove it? Minecraft, what are you doing? Our, our next Minecraft myth states that there are new walking sounds. Someone at Mojang actually literally went out and just walked on a bunch of things because they felt like it needed updated. So I'm gonna max this volume out here. So in order to test this, I created a little obstacle course that has all the new items that have new sounds. Now, apparently these don't have any sounds in the current Minecraft version, but the new version added them. So first up we have wool carpet. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. I really don't, I can't admit, I can't admit whether or not I remember what the basic blocks sound like. So it's just not like a common thing for me. However, I can confirm these all currently do have sounds, which means this is probably confirmed. That guy wasn't lying. He says, I discovered that you can sneak to place pointy hanging signs on full blocks. All right, guys, let me give you a little lesson in Minecraft hanging signs. You've probably never seen this before, but these have a lot of weird ways of working. The first way they work, I call this one the old normal. It's just the name I gave it. This one extends off of a tree like so, and it looks very beautiful. However, if you want to put a sign underneath something, it looks a little different, right? You can see it loses that little, you know what I'm saying? It's just a hanging sign. But there's another variant as well, and this is actually the pointy boy. And this can be done by shift clicking. That is what the hack was telling us. That's really cool. You know, you put all three of these together, something like this, and you can get a nice little, uh, nice little example of how all three of these look. So there's three variants for these. Which one's your favorite? Um, to me, I feel like I like this one the most. I, I don't know if I like the pointy one as much. Like this one feels more secure. That one works, myth confirmed. Now, is it true that you can sit on the ground in Minecraft? It says that in 1.20, if you use a raft, four layers of snow and some carpets, you can just sit. Crap, one, two, three, four. Okay, four layers of that, then a boat. Uh, obviously I wanna use a birch boat because it feels like it'll match the snow better or the sand. And then carpet on top of this, we'll just use this. Hey, wait a minute. This might work. This might work. How do you sit in the boat after this? I'm curious. If you sit in it and then place the carpet, maybe? No, I can't. I can't place it when I'm sitting in it. I think maybe you could break the side and then you sit in it and then you put the blocks back that you just broke or something like that. There we go. Look at that. Okay, I'm a little bit deeper than I would actually have intended for this particular situation. However, you guys need to have a little tea party with that special someone in Minecraft. Maybe a little long distance relationship date here. Confirmed. All right, these are these are starting to get literally insane right now. This is a hanging sign type rope or something. Let's get a different hanging sign for this one. I want to try the mangrove hanging sign, but let's go ahead and try a walking bridge from here. Oh, that's a nightmare. You have to escape out of every single one that you click because it wants you to write something. Okay, let's see how it looks from the top. It looks weird, but if you're directly on, like straight in a line, it looks like sort of a pipe system. And you can definitely walk across it. Yeah, there's not a lot of benefits to using this particular one, but you could if it's something that you wanted to do. <laughs> I just don't know why you would. Confirm. Before I show you, I just want to apologize because this one is going to curse you. They say the camel's nose looks like a cat. All right, we have the camel spawn egg, and now we're going to have to see if the camel has it. Camel nose, cat face. So you got like two eyes, a nose, some high whites. Oh God, oh God, oh no. Look at that, it literally is the exact same thing. It has the two eyes, the nose, the eye whites, even the mouth. Bro actually put a cat head at the end of that. It, it looks almost like a giant tube. Like its neck is a straight line and they put a head on the, looks like a wither skull just plopped on a little tube. This is like some demented demon. That, this might be one of the worst things we've seen today. And I'm, I'm upset that it worked actually. This one is the most iffyous of them all. Somehow this happened. So a lot of people don't actually know this. This is a little fun fact for you guys. All right, if you click both buttons, at the same time it instantly replaces something in creative mode so i'm gonna go ahead and get sand let's see if this works oh okay how did he do this then we do it under 
Oh, you do it under it. Oh, that's how it works. You place the sand, then this goes under it. And then, this to me feels like a really interesting way to make like a hovering futuristic world with like floating signs. Like this feels like a drone would fly over and then have info about information below it about your server. Oh, look at that. Oh, you could, oh, you could make it look like a ladder. Look at that. Oh, broke it all. Hey, that's another hack for you guys. Bonus hack of the day. We can make a ladder out of sign. Okay, this is one I think I noticed early on, so I gotta say this is probably true already, but it says the new creative menu has completely changed. All the blocks are grouped, which makes a lot more sense to me. I don't really do that. Oh, that's weird. This is weird. This one seems very busy to me. Oh, they combined the books. What is this one called? Oh, this one's called crafting. This is all your crafting resources. That's like a big change. Look, I think it looks a lot better. It'll take some time to get used to, but to me, it's a dub. All right, hanging signs as fences. That looks really good. Let's try the new creative menu here and find the bamboo section. Oh, how about that? Bamboo, bamboo. Oh, but the hanging sign doesn't actually appear in the bamboo section. That's kind of weird. But the hanging signs are out on their own because they're a functional block. All right, let's go ahead and test this out here. So maybe we could do like three in the middle, look really good. And then you could do trap doors, like a slab on the corner and then trap doors in the middle. <laughs> that looks cool, dude. To me, this looks really sick. I'm gonna put a like cow in there though and see if it'll actually survive or a goat. Can't get out. I don't think so. That's pretty high. It's almost like a way to make a higher fence. My next question is if you take off the trap doors, could it then escape as well? Because this also looks good. Maybe you could even come in and like something like that. Make it a little thicker. Like if you want, if you like want to make like a serious cage, like that's an option. You can just see its feet. I don't know. You can't throw items through a regular fence. So the fact that you can throw items through this fence to me makes me think there's some benefit to it, right? Yeah, look at that, see? It stops them. Now it doesn't. There's something that can be done with this. There has to be. I just need, I need someone to tell me because I'm not smart enough to figure that out on my own. Because <laughs> we, we really don't have much time left to test these rest of the ones. I gotta knock these out, but let's see what we have here. He says you're immune to mobs on a camel. Is it true that Minecraft camels are so tall that you can't take damage on them? Like, let's say, let me get like a skeleton out here. We set it to, no, maybe a zombie. Get a camel, tame the camel. It's time set night. Can that thing hurt us up here is the question. You're immune to zombies on a camel? I thought of all the things we tested, this was the most unrealistic that I've seen today. I mean, this is, this is mind blowing. What? Explosions are now absorbed by shields, but not huh. just absorbed, they knock you back. And using more TNT knocks you back further. Well, I don't even need to show the rest of that. I can tell you guys, I think you know what we're gonna be testing with this one. Can you actually launch yourself with a bunch of TNT in a minecart? You really only need minecarts and rails. <laughs> is, is this embarrassing to me? I think it's an activator rail and then a lever. And then you're gonna turn that on and that's gonna ignite all of these, I believe. So, let me just make sure. There it is, okay, look at this. I'm actually placing these, and I believe you can withstand 30. All right, we're at 30 right now. We're gonna put the lever back, and then all we need to do is get ourselves a shield and it, give it on breaking three. Okay, now we go in survival mode, and then we have to get above this, and I don't know... What? All right, I just did 25. We're just gonna play it safe. Let's go ahead and just do this. There we go. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'm not sure how we got, but we got some real distance. Wow. No, they just need to make it more realistic so when you hit the ground, it leaves a crater, but I'm gonna give that hack a 10 out of 10. That definitely is real. Here, that's what's interesting to me. That little clip right there of the camel dashing over a giant ravine because I didn't get the impression they were nimble creatures. Are you telling me that in real life, camels can actually dash over something like this, like a giant behemoth of an animal? I just, I personally don't see it. Uh, after this, I would do want to test one more thing, guys. A little lover fella special. I gotta know what happens if you kill a camel. Do they drop camel meat, camel milk? Do they drop water buckets? I got some questions. Let's go ahead and do this one here, folks. Huh. Well, that uh, <clears throat> didn't work, but let's answer the question we all really came here to answer today. What happens when you kill a camel? What type of meat does it give you? What does a baby camel give you? Camel veal? I have literally less than like four minutes left to test this last hack here today or I lose. All right, we're gonna do this with a trident. It's the only way to do it. Let's see if this thing has any drops at all. We'll do a big one and a baby. Here we go. Oh, he's a runner. Four shots, no drops, unfortunately. How about you? Nothing. Okay, so last week we tried to survive slash kill and it was impossible. But this new comment says we can survive it by using full netherite armor, which we also enchanted. Although I don't think that does anything. A notch apple and a potion of healing. So we're gonna try to take all of these right now. Drink that. Drink Bruh. a little golden apple. And now if I use slash kill, this might actually let me survive. Let's go ahead and try this out. Slash kill lover fella. I hope this works. Dang it. 
All right, now Minecraft 1.18 lets you build higher, but this next myth says you can go above the build limit in 1.18 using a Minecraft piston. So we got to get all the way up there, which means we're going to be here for a while. We did it. Okay, we can't go higher. Now, if my math is correct, which it's probably not, these can possibly push this above the height limit. So again, we cannot place above it, right? Impossible. So now we're going to power this on and see what happens. Nope. You tell me it doesn't even turn on. All right, what if we put a block here and then turn it on? Nope. What? Dude, literally they actually locked it. Minecraft, usually you're full of bugs. What's going on here, big dog? Our next myth says that you're going to find way more ancient debris in the nether if you're near a chunk border, which uh, looks like this. So we're going to go test this one out downstairs. So here's how we're going to test this. Lots of TNT. All right, let's see what this reveals for us real quick. You know, I really hope this works. All right, let's take a look at the damage here. We have absolutely obliterated a patch of land here. We're looking for a single netherite. Here's the deal on this one. Mathematically, it checks out in practice. This stuff's so rare, it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. But I would still recommend it. This one's worth doing. Guys, speaking of worth it, please like the video and comment done. You're going to be on next week's shout out right here. Shout out to all these people and all of our Texas viewers this week. Specifically Texas. Why? I don't know. All right, so here's our next myth. It states that we can create a stone pickaxe using a regular stone or even a furnace, which means you don't need cobblestone. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and give it a test right now. Here we go. Boom. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I teased you. Oh, here we go. Nope. Oh, it doesn't work. Yo, I didn't think this one would work, but like a part of me was like, hmm, maybe it does. This one, false. Okay, this one sounds sus to me. We're going to go find a ruined nether portal because he says if we dig underneath it, some of them will give you a crazy amount of loot, including ancient debris. So we're going to see if there's any ancient debris here. All right, here's what our chest has. Uh, unfortunately, no debris for us. Now let's look under it. Oh my gosh. Guys, dude, look at this. It actually works. Nah, I'm kidding. We'll rewind it, show you what happened. This is totally fake, totally cap. Guys, while I was looking at the next myth, I realized ruin portals also existed inside the nether. So we're going to go back and retest this one now in the nether to see if it's real. All right, so here's our borderline invisible ruin portal. We're going to check this chest if I can find it. All right, nothing in here. Now we're going to clear out the bottom. Yeah, apparently, this will give us ancient debris. And at least it's possible. Now, I don't know what I was thinking testing the overworld. Now, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one way to test that. And it's with a giant core full of TNT. There it is, folks. All right, let's let her light. Let her, let her light. Don't know what that means. Let's do it, though. We gotta be kind of quick here because lava will fill it up. We're supposed to be looking for ancient debris underneath it. All right, I think it's a double confirmed. This one's like double fake. All right, this is Minecraft rooted dirt. If you didn't know how to get this, you plant an azalea tree and then underneath the azalea tree, you get rooted dirt. Okay, so for this one, the guy claims that if you pour lava on the rooted dirt, it turns back to regular dirt. And I don't know why. For some reason, I believe this. So if my boy just made that up, congrats. That's weirdly believable. There it is. Lava going on. We break it. Doesn't, I, I, I don't think like it works. What if we have to totally fully encase it in lava? Dang, I'll tell you what, that dirt vanished about as fast as my mom did for my life. All right, let's see what we got here. It's good. It's still there. Totally busted. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> This guy's comment, he doesn't even believe his own comment. I also don't think this is true. He literally admitted it. I, I, I'm here for it. I, I love the honesty. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and put this down. Pop on ahead. All right, you've been created by me. You now serve me, and I'm going to slice you. Do you understand me? I will slice your body. All right, son. Wait a minute. What? Wait, is this true? I was making fun of the kid for saying it wouldn't work because I knew it wouldn't work and, and, it, and it works. Did I just get roasted? Did this guy just drop a comment to roast me like this? All right, I, I got to stop predicting things. I have no idea that will work. So a horse is drowned in Minecraft. And just to demonstrate, we're going to kill one right now in this giant abyss of doom. So you can see clearly death is happening. So now, in order to prevent a horse from dying, again, this makes literally no sense. When drowning, you can pour water on its head and it will cease to drown. You have to trap it in here so that he can't vertically travel. So this horse will begin drowning soon. Now, according to this, we just pour water on it and it will never drown. If this works, I will literally un install Minecraft. Okay, thank God. I honestly, it just seemed like the dumbest comment. If this thing worked, I would have lost my mind. It's fake. All right, our next one asks so politely, I gotta test this. We're gonna test if uh, cauldrons and fire resistance doesn't work. That didn't make sense. We're not only gonna test his myth of does drinking a fire resistance potion and jumping in lava actually still damage you, we're gonna test multiple more because my boy was polite. So number one, does it work with fire? Oh, anyway, does magma? Still working. How about actual lava? Yo, we're three for three right now. All right, all right. Here's the big honka right here. Look at this little guy. It's a final showdown. It's time to see what you're really made of. Oh, look at that. It works on literally every type of fire and lava in the game. Are right, this one super relevant if you're dream? The myth says you can only use one type of fishing rod in the nether. It's, it's actually just a fungus. And they say you can't even cast the regular fishing rod here. So we're going to cast it on one of these little chalupas. Looks like you can. And I can pull you right into the lava and make you drown, can't I? I ain't going to lie to you. He just walked in there by himself. Didn't even need to do the rod. Uh, it's false. It's not true. For some reason, y'all needed to know if you jump five times in survival, does it let you fly? Uh, you really think that works? You honestly think this is gonna work? One, two, three, four, 
Five. Oh my gosh, it didn't work. Who would have believed that that wouldn't have worked? That's crazy. I can't, I can't believe it. All right, y'all have probably seen me do stuff like this on my shorts channel, but drip leaves are fascinating, and so is Minecraft logic. So we're going to test out if a feather makes this thing break, but an anvil makes it not break. Step one, we're going to throw the feather on here. Okay, so clearly the feather works. It makes it break. You can see that happen. Now we're going to drop the anvil on it. If this doesn't break, dude... Hey, why aren't you breaking? You should be folding in half. You should be crushing under the weight of that. Turns out my boy was right. Minecraft logic, you be flawed. Breaking the bookshelves and replacing them changes the enchantment you're going to get. So we got looting three. Looting three still. Still looting three. What if we break the enchantment table? Still looting three. Well, how is this rendered? How, what is this based off of? I literally remade it. Wait, what if, we, what if it's based on where it's positioned? Looting one. How does this determine? This is fake. This is a lie to you. You know who's not a liar? Me. Now I'll subscribe. All right, a lot of you got mad at me because last video, I guess I tested one wrong. You're supposed to wear leather boots and that allows you to climb forever with powdered snow buckets. We're gonna try that again. Here we go. Oh, I was stupid. Okay, so you literally can climb forever in just powdered snow with just leather boots. That's all I did wrong. All right, here's our next myth. This says in the meadow biome, there's one tree always guaranteed to have at least a beehive on it. So here we are in the meadow, but I don't see no beehives. Oh, wait, bees. There should be a beehive nearby. Where are you coming from? Oh, wait, wait. No. Oh, there it is. We found it. So I don't know if it's just one or one minimum. I only see one right now. We're going to see if there's one more. Wait. Two. We got two. Okay, we got two beehives. So it seems like, oh, there's one over there. That one's confirmed. Now, this myth caught my eye. Because it's very cursed. This one says you pillar up, you type this command in. And it's supposed to give you a floating sugar cane. So it seems to not be working. What about cactus? I feel like this one doesn't work. All it does is instantly creates a block that vanishes in thin air. And it doesn't actually make it float. Fake. Our next myth says a beacon beam can go through bedrock. All right, here's our beacon. Right into the sky it goes. Literally the smallest beacon possible. Now, let's get ourselves a little bedrock and uh, maybe a bed. See if it goes through a bed. Let's test the bed first. Yo! It goes through the bed. You can make a bed tower on the beacon. Okay, okay. Creeper head? Creeper head works. That's how you make it look like your creeper's brain's exploding. Leaves also work, which means if you build enough leaves, you could hide the entire beacon. I thought they would work because they're transparent blocks. Finally, the bedrock. And it, uh, wait, actually, wait, it actually works? Huh? I'm actually shook by that because I thought there was no chance this worked. This myth says if you break a shulker box and it falls to the ground, it doesn't fall. It actually teleports to the ground. So first off, it, that's definitely false because it's sticking to the wall. So we're going to have to drop it and, and then it just falls and it doesn't teleport. This is not good. This is more disappointing than my grade card back when I was in middle school. It says you can make sticks out of bamboo. And I literally don't know what bamboo is used for besides feeding pandas. I feel like this one is true because then it gives bamboo a use. Oh, really? You can actually do that? Now, does that make it more efficient to farm bamboo than it does to farm trees? Guys, this next one, I just tested early because I was too excited and I had to know if it worked. And it says, breaking a tripwire uses the exact same sound as shooting a bow, which makes basically no sense. But listen to the bow. You hear that? Got it. Got it in your brain. Now we're going to break this and I want you to compare it. Does that not sound exactly like a skeleton or a bow or something related to bows? That one's weird. Minecraft, what you doing? That's lazy. Y'all are a billion dollar company. Give me a real tripwire sound. You see, it actually begins in the Minecraft live video. If I pause this image, do you see anything unusual? If we make the image bigger, it might help. Still nothing? Well, guys, take a look at this. If we zoom in right here where my mouse is, you can actually decipher the words Jungle Village. Isn't that weird? Because as far as I know, jungle villages don't exist in Minecraft. Now, here we are inside of a Minecraft jungle. And what a lot of people don't know is that jungle villagers already exist. The only thing is you can't find them naturally. The only way to see them is to buy is by spawning one in with a jungle egg. But when you combine this with the fact that Minecraft's also adding new bamboo items that maybe relate to the jungle, because I don't know, bamboo is a jungle themed item it starts to make sense that that was actually maybe a legit teaser for a new jungle village coming to the game now our next minecraft conspiracy is about the three dimensions the overworld the end and the nether you see a lot of us believe they're actually different dimensions but this reddit user claims that they're actually all connected you see, his theory is that they're not connected via portals, but via distance. The nether is below the overworld, which is below the end. To test this, we need to go look at the bottom and the top of the normal world to see if there's any hints. Let's go to the bottom of the Minecraft world. You see, if you break your way all the way down to the bottom of a Minecraft world, if you go past the bedrock at the bottom, 
One thing you might notice is that there's this giant black void that you would probably assume falls to nothing, right? I mean, you would assume there's nothing down here. If you go deep enough, you start taking damage and die and the world fades away. But, but let's think about this a little bit. Is it possible the Minecraft dimensions are actually connected and that space between the bottom of the overworld and the top of the nether is just so big, it's hard to reach it. So I added myself jump boost 1 billion. This allows me to literally jump as high as possible and maybe we'll be able to jump into the end, which is possible above us. Doesn't seem like that's working. Let's try it again. Jump boost a thousand. All right, we're going to try to make this a little bit bigger though. So this is now the biggest jump boost we can possibly do. We're going to see if this allows us to jump into the next dimension. It's literally not even possible to go higher than the other jump boost we did, which means there's no way to actually jump to the other dimension if we were to maybe teleport Loverfella to Squiggly one billion and squiggly this takes us incredibly high i'm gonna do it even higher i'm gonna try like 5 billion see if it lets us we're so unbelievably high right now we're at 18 million blocks and it's still letting us go 19 million now my guess is that you can't do 20 so what if you do 19 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine? we're now so high the minecraft command doesn't even let you go this high we're 20 million 1000 blocks high we've identified a second sun but it doesn't seem like there's actually a way to get to the end unless you keep flying so i would say this myth this conspiracy theory that they're all connected is probably not true how am i going to get back down this conspiracy is actually about Minecraft's newest and most dangerous boss, the Warden. Now, let's start by looking at the Warden's design. Let's notice that he's very sad. They intentionally gave him a frown. And so this user went on to show us a couple more things to back up his theory. To show you, we need to go to the deep dark. You see, in the deep dark, the Warden is the only mob I know of that doesn't attack you instantly. In fact, he gives you three warnings to get away from him. And if you go through all three warnings from, uh, you know, notifying these little bad boys here, then he comes out and attacks you. And that's very curious to me because what other mob in the game gives you any sort of warning? But the Warden does. You could hear the second heartbeat. And there he is, after three warnings. So he's frowning, he gives you three warnings and doesn't attack instantly, that backs up the theory that the warden is not actually the bad guy in Minecraft. Well, let's look at the fact that he has no eyeballs. Maybe they were poked out by hot dog pokers. Huh? Or, more likely, he was blinded and sent down here to be trapped. I mean, isn't it interesting for our fourth point here that there's literally no other mobs except the warden down here? It literally seems like he was killed by some being and moved here to be kept away from every other mob in the game, blinded so he didn't know where he was, and then mazes were placed everywhere. It's really like a giant maze, so he can't find out how to leave. He gives you warnings because he's telling you, hey, if you don't get out of here, bro, I'm gonna have to attack and I can't control it. They made me do this. And then he digs back down to the ground because he's sad. I think we got to confirm the warden is the victim here. He's actually a good guy. That's, I didn't think I'd be on the warden side. What if Minecraft emeralds are evil? Let me explain to you guys what I mean. The only mobs that actually know about Minecraft emeralds are the villagers, the illagers, the witches, the evokers, and the pillagers. Those five mobs are the only mobs in the game that really know of emeralds existence. You see, a question players have asked for years is why are there no emerald tools? That an item you could get has literally no tools? And then isn't it even weirder that of all five of these mobs, all only one of them is actually innocent, while the other four are evil. Maybe with some more context will make sense. Minecraft raids. You see, when the bells start ringing, it means the Minecraft pillagers are about to attack your village and kill everybody inside of it. But what's interesting is that when you kill these pillagers, they can drop emeralds. Minecraft pillagers drop emeralds on bedrock edition. Maybe what's happening here, guys, is the pillagers are attacking the villagers because the villagers have emeralds. Then the pillagers take the emeralds back and use them for their own resources and their own crafting. What items might the pillagers be crafting? Well, this is where it gets very interesting. I don't know about you, but those sure look like emerald eyeballs in this totem of undying to me. I don't know about you, but that sure looks like an emerald in this witch's hat to me. And this witch certainly looks a little bit like a pillager that maybe just put on a fancy hat, maybe powered up by emeralds. And where do you get the Minecraft totem of undyings? Of course, you get them from evokers who are also killing villagers. So you put this all together and it means that Minecraft tools can't be crafted from emerald because emeralds are actually a magic resource. That's why we don't have emerald items. Do I believe this can conspiracy it's pretty out there but to be honest with you those look like emeralds and that definitely looks like an emerald so i gotta say there could be some logic to this one but one of the most disturbing myths that i've ever heard of the myth is that steve has amnesia you see when you create a brand new single player world like this we're gonna go ahead and show this with minimal cuts here to show that it is legit the world can show you statistics. You see, inside the new world, there's this button called statistics. Now, it's a button I've never personally used in my entire life. I honestly didn't even realize it was here, but let's click on it and see what it shows us. Shows us things like how many animals you've bred, how many banners you've cleared, all the information on your world that's possible. But if we scroll down, 
It says time since last death, 3.35 seconds. In other words, the time since my last death is the time since the world was created. So let's look at it again. It's been a couple more seconds. Time since last death is now 3.9 seconds. How is it possible that there was a previous death if I haven't died yet? Unless it means that I had to die to create this world. There's another implication here that supports the fact that you may have amnesia or Steve remembers a previous life because when you open the crafting table, he has memory of how to craft items. Why is it when I pick up a log, he remembers spruce planks and when I place these down, he knows that it turns into that. It all kind of comes together, make you think maybe, just maybe, Steve's been alive before. And that also goes goes on to explain things like Minecraft ruined portals or other mysterious structures, which we really don't know the origins of. So maybe as Minecraft updates and adds new features, it gets us that much closer to remembering who we really are. Maybe we'll eventually be able to connect the dots and understand the true history of everything in Minecraft. The warden is actually immune to fall damage, fire damage, knockback, powdered snow, and pretty much anything except for sword damage. Number one, we're going for fall damage. Why is he blue? Is that normal? That don't seem normal to me. All right, here we go. He does take fall damage. Okay, we're gonna retest that at the end because I need to see if I drop him from like world height if that'll kill him. Fall damage is a go. They do take fall damage. I don't know how much. Okay, fire damage. This should be pretty simple. Obviously, he's immune to fire. We're gonna try lava just to double check on her. No, he just swims out of it. Okay, definitely no fire damage. Don't be doing that. Knockback's gonna be difficult. Um, no, definitely no, definitely no. There's no knockback damage coming in. That's another red. So finally, we'll try powdered snow. Okay. Oh, it is. No, it's not. Is it? What? He's taking damage. Oh, dude, he is. Yo, powdered snow works. That's so easy. Okay, so powdered snow works. Oh, wait, I got to put green. I said I would put green. I will put green. But to get the first one confirmed, we're going to go all the way to world height. Here comes the warden. Here we go. Oh, God, he's quick. He's moving quick. Wow, I didn't kill him. So my question is, like, how much did it hurt him? Okay, basically fall damage is another red. It does basically nothing. The only one of these that works is the powdered snow, which is kind of awesome because I think you could definitely farm them or something. I don't know. Anyway, it works. Good myth, guys. Thank you for dropping a good myth. Unlike the first dude who said you could smelt tadpoles and rub tadpole paste on your body to attract villagers. Which one of you did that? Seriously, tell me. I'm... I don't remember. Moving on to our next myth, guys. It says you can find 20 diamonds minimum in the loot chests of an ancient city. We're gonna see if this is like a legit way to get stuff or if it spawns like infinite freaking demons to take our souls out. That can't be good. Oh God, watch out for that. I wouldn't, oh, there's a chest. Okay, that's not good sounding. Definitely no diamonds. She's hard early on. You know, she's very difficult. Okay, all right, all right. We definitely have a demon. I don't see any diamonds, man. This seems to not be the best strategy. Okay. That, honestly, there were a lot of ways I thought that I would die and that didn't even cross my mind. I don't know, man. 20 minimum and I haven't even seen one yet. Seems a little absurd. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Imagine coming down here and you find a diamond hoe with efficiency five. Imagine that's what you get for risking your life. Ooh, this looks important. Wow, coal. Okay, I haven't even looked at all the chests yet and I already want to call it busted. There's probably a few more to look at, but our inventory, we haven't even seen one diamond. I find it hard to believe there would be 20. We got one more to look at back here, though. This could be 20 diamonds. Honestly, pretty thick chest. They really like the diamond hose down here. It's like they're trying to troll you. So this is what I've got. I collected every single chest that I could find. And it was full of a lot of junk, some decent stuff, but really a lot of junk. There's no diamonds. You're not getting diamonds. Maybe you get diamond armor, if anything else. This doesn't seem like a myth, but it had a lot of upvotes and players seemed curious. Does wool actually silence your footsteps around the wardens? See, here's the thing I want to find out. Does carpet work as well as wool? Because it takes two of these to make three carpet, which means you're basically getting a free block. So what we're going to do, I need to find one of those little creatures. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, it might work. Oh God, okay, maybe, okay. Oh my God, that's not what I expected. Look at this, look at this. On the, on the carpet, nothing. Off the carpet, shooting out little zingers. So it does work actually. You probably wanna use carpet instead of wool to block your sound if you can, because it's more efficient, especially if you're going through and using the last hack to try to collect infinite diamond hose, because that seems to be all we could collect for some reason. Tea break. Nah, this has nothing to do with wardens or anything. There's really no smooth way to transition to this, so I'll just do my best. Cats! Aww. Do they take fall damage in Minecraft, or do they always land on their feet? Well, let's try the ocelot, because really this is a form of cat. I think. I honestly always thought this was a cat, so I don't really know the difference. Anyway, good luck, brother. Oh, look at 
than that, it is a cat, so ocelots don't take damage. Cats probably don't take damage. You know, uh, that is a little misleading, Mojang, to say we can't have fireflies because frogs would eat them and get poisonous, yet to allow a cat to fall from infinite height and take no damage, I just don't know if it's gonna make it. Okay, so earlier, like, well, early, probably like a minute ago for you, we tested something to see if you could get infinite diamonds in the deep dark and you couldn't. Okay, there's another new myth for 1.19, which says if you do locate Woodland Mansion, there's a new room that is solid diamond. I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds fake though. Okay, you know what would be easier if I actually just, we take the roof off, the whole thing, gone. Before I reveal this, I'm gonna do a little bet with you guys. There is no diamond room. And if there is, I'll delete my channel. Please God, don't be a diamond. One for conspiracy theories, but y'all tell me they didn't just kill a bunch of Steves and literally steal their clothes, make beds out of it and sleep on the Steve bodies. That's all I'm saying. That's a suspicious colorway. Anyway, this one's busted. One of the newest myths, you can kill a warden by just simply dropping it into a five by five hole of water where he slowly suffocates to death. Because if he does, it would feel to me like Mojang specifically coded him to not be killed by water. Like, look at him. What if we seal it off though? I wonder if he even can drown. Yeah. Mojang, y'all thought, y'all thought you could code it so it couldn't drown, but guess what? You didn't think about roofs, did you? That's why, that's why... I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I was gonna say. All right, next myth. They say Minecraft dogs are a player's best friend. If you're like me, you don't have any friends. So a Minecraft dog is all you have. I'm gonna call you Fido, buddy. I love you, Fido. You're the best dog I can ever ask for. Let's go, Fido. Let's go on an adventure together. Fido, help! A zombie! Oh! Fido, you're a hero. I love you so much. Let's go ahead and get you a home built, okay? Fido, look, buddy. I made you a new little home. We really have such a good connection, don't we? But the theory states that because it's your best friend, it has extra health when fighting for you against the warden. My guess? Dog dies in one punch and I go away more lonely than I thought possible. Good luck, Fido. You got this, buddy. Come on, Fido. No, Fido! No, Fido's gone! No, Fido! Oh, no. But it actually, he, he, he withstood for two hits, so... Rest in peace, Fido. The answer, though, is he took two hits, and uh, now we're gonna join Fido. Because I am now depressed that I lost my dog. Fido, this is for you. That's right, buddy. Four hits. But the good news is, at least we get to see Fido now. Wait a minute. Where's Fido? I wasn't supposed to go here. So our next myth is actually really stupid. And it says goat horns make goats hostile to you. Um, do they? If I pop a couple G boys down, they're going to come at me. What's up, boys? What's up, boys? I hate goats, but let's go ahead and try it. See if the, see if the G's come at me. Doesn't really seem like it. I wonder if I kill their babies, though, if that'll do it. Someone's got to answer the question. I mean, might as well be me, you know? Yeah, these goats are pretty impartial. They don't seem to care a whole lot about things, so. Seem pretty cool. Goats are pretty chill, to be honest. All right. I'm literally using your horn to make music and burn your baby, but hey, busted. So we all know, or at least most of us know, that if a frog kills a magma cube, depending on the color of the frog, you get a different colored frog light. Right, he just spits it out, poops it out his butt. Basically, my question is, what happens if you put a bunch of frogs in a bunch of magma cubes down, the myth says the game lags, the frogs fight each other, and uh, there's just like some weird glitches associated with this. So here's all of our frogs. So the theory is like the frog tongues are supposed to hit the other frogs on accident, creating a giant chaos of frogs eating each other. You know, I wonder if the reason frogs can jump is because they eat magmas and the baby magmas are in their stomach jumping. And each time a frog jumps, it's actually the baby magma jumping in their stomach. That's a theory. <clears throat> well, I feel like I'm watching paint dry here. Not a lot's going on. They dropped regular frog lights. That's it. It's cool though. Actually, it's not. It's not cool. I don't know why I said that. Okay, this one requires us to open up Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This is a myth for the ages. This is a myth that the Nordic Vikings would have used in order to survive back in the day. Actually, it has nothing to do with that, but it felt like a really good like hype up story for this. Basically, if a charged creeper kills a stray, a wither skeleton skull is dropped, which could be beneficial because wither skeleton skulls can be difficult to get. But now that I think about it, a charged creeper and a stray killing each other seem way unlikely, and I don't know if the odds of this happening are very high, so, hmm, interesting. This would be a very complicated thing to create. Like, to be honest with you, I don't know how someone's going to have this kill this without you dying, but we're gonna try it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Get him, get him. 
Okay, so it did kill me. This one, this one's interesting. It says nether portals have a minimum size, but no maximum. So we're gonna use world edit to see if we can actually create like a maximum world record at nether portal. Now, if we fly all the way back over here and set the center of this to air, I should be able to test this out and see if you could make some sort of a super nether portal. Uh, it should be completed. Or did I take off the top? Bro, what? This is very difficult to get the entire selection perfected here, guys. There's a lot of finesse that goes into it, but I'm gonna get the answer for you. There we go. And it doesn't work. All right, there's a lot of myths out there as well that state you can use nether portals to x-ray with. Apparently it was possible in older versions. I don't know if you still can. So you're supposed to use it with water. To me, it, does, it looks like water. Now, you guys know how pigmen will actually come through nether portals. Like they'll somehow walk through. Well, this myth states that there is a limit to how many can walk through. We're gonna try to see if we can duplicate this like a dozen times. This is gonna be 100 nether portals, literally side by side by side. So we're gonna get a really good example of if there's a limit to how many pigmen can come through this. So I guess we just sit and wait for a second. And I don't know if I have to go through these to begin the process. So it's like not really happening yet. Oh, we got one. <laughs> it just up at the top. He does the, oh, that's, oh, we got another. Oh, this is interesting. Now what I'm gonna do is with 100 nether portals, I'm gonna leave the game running and see if every single door gets full of a pigment for the next 10 minutes. Oh, he walked back through. Interesting. Well, that's an issue. We could go bigger. Well, I accidentally made it uh, <laughs> just a little bit bigger here, folks. I really do want to get to the bottom of this. Is there a limit to how many pigment you can get? It, it really seems like uh, there, there is one on that side, yeah. It's not like, it's not fast. I have 500 nether portals right here. That's actually 500. I literally counted. And we only have two of them in like five minutes that have made any sort of pig. Like, I feel like it's just not really working. Our next myth states, the wither is the only mob that can't actually go through the portal. So we're gonna try to build a wither here with a wither skull and some soul sand. I don't see why it wouldn't, but you never know. How do I get it through now is the question. Like that's the, that's the thing. How do we get it to actually go through? We can kind of like trap it maybe if I'm quick. I'm trying to seal off every potential exit path. Oh, oh he broke the portal. That's gonna make it tough. What? There's no way you can fit through that, bro. All right, let's try it again. My concern is that when he explodes, oh God, it just kicks me through. When he explodes, will he break the portals? Cause then he could get out. I've gotta be quick to relight them if he does. He does. There we go. I'm going in spectator mode so I can get out of this. Let's see if he like manages to fly through any of these. He's, he's like, I, I actually want to say this might be legit. I don't think the wither can go through the portal. I want to say that's confirmed. You cannot send the wither through portals. While we're at it, let's go ahead and test if you can type while you're in a portal. I think that's actually like, you can't actually, I'm going to do survival. Nope. You can't! Whoa! That is fascinating. Why would they not allow you to type in the portal? If you create your portal in the sky, does that mean that when you enter it, it's gonna have a bridge or some sort of elevated status? All right, let's see. Will this be in the sky? Will we be in the sky? We are... I mean, actually, it legitimately did bring us to the sky. Not only are we in the sky, we're also like on an elevated platform like that just said. So this one could be confirmed. Now, the way Minecraft works, uh, if you actually hold an item on computer, this is interesting, a lot of people don't know this, and you double click both mouse buttons at once, it instantly replaces a block. So you don't have to like break in place. You just click both, it's kinda nice. This myth suggests you can do that to another portal and replace it with anything. No. Depending on what side of the portal you're in, will you actually go to a different side when you exit? So we're gonna see where this takes us. We're gonna walk in a straight line and see where we go and we fall off the edge, right? So it took us facing away from the portal. We were facing this way. Now we go in this way. And it's the same direction. I don't think the way you enter a portal determines which way you face it when you leave. Let's talk a little bit about nether mob myths like hoglins. The myth states they won't attack you if you are hiding behind a nether portal. Let's see. Hi, boys. This works? Look at this. <laughs> they are somehow afraid of it. Can a wither relight a portal? Hi, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, this. There it is. There it is. Light it up, baby. Yeah, it's gonna be a no for me, dog. That's gonna be a no for me. Is it true zombie pigmen and, oh, I don't know why I did that. They're all immune to fire damage, which means if you go to the bottom of the fire lake, you'll find a bunch of pigments. Okay, definitely didn't look immune to me. Oh, nope. Thank you for your sacrifice, sir. They're not immune, but apparently ghasts are, as you can see in the background. Now, how does this make sense? It's literally, what is inside of a gas to make it float? It's gotta be helium. So how are you telling me the lava doesn't make the gas explode? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. What? Where'd he just go? You're telling me these things can swim? 
No wonder. Oh, I think he just died. Yeah, anyway, it busted. Now, wandering trainers are finicky little guys. They're like little introverted villagers, and apparently they drink invisibility potions immediately if they're in the nether. This does not seem to be true. If you bring a cat to the nether, does it constantly hiss because it's uncomfortable? All right, guys, here's the deal. I got him where I want him. If you don't subscribe to my channel right now, I will literally murder this cat. Do it. Three, two. All right, he's good. He's good. Oh, I know that one dude didn't subscribe. Probably some dude from Arkansas. All right, all right, all right we're good. We're good. He survives and he doesn't hiss. You can't bring water to the nether, but apparently water or snow is bringable. Let's go ahead and first see. Obviously, no. All right, we're on fire. Water. Oh, that didn't last. Water. Did not work. It seems like snow does work though. Uh, that does work. Snow in the nether is pretty OP. Is it true there's no void underneath the nether? No, it's just a void. Yeah, no. I mean, what's under the nether? Is there another nether? It doesn't make sense. Busted. If you use set block, by the way, set block is a command. You can type slash set block. Uh, th then it'll give you your coordinates and you just like turn a block near you into an item. Apparently if you do water, the water becomes red. <gasps> it didn't become red, but it actually gave us water. Woo! What? Whoa, nether water. That's a thing you don't see every day. I just realized I have not had night vision for a minute, so you might not have been able to see as well. So please accept this dancing chicken as an apology. All right, for this next one, we have to disconnect from the world. Go to your main menu. This is one you're gonna wanna follow along with at home, guys. You go to create a new world here. And if you didn't know, you can like create custom worlds. Single biome, and there's one that says nether. Nether wastes? And I don't know what this is gonna give us. This is an incredible experiment to test and find out. Is this good? What? Bro, it just looks like... Oh, no, that ain't right. It's it, This is weird. This is not what I expected. It's hideous. Oh, God, look at the water. What about the down here? There's no ore. Yo, this is nasty. Apparently, wet sponges in the nether dry instantly. Oh, ice. Does it work in the nether? Can you even place it? And does it melt? See, now that you got to explain to me because it is actually next to water. You would suspect this would melt. I would say it's busted. Nether sky. Do it be changing color based on biome you are in? Let us find out the answer. Current sky color red. Current sky color purple. Myth confirmed. I don't understand why this would be a thing, but I am told that glow squid ink from one of you does not work in the nether. Subscribe or die a painful death. It does work. Now, I have been told that lava flows like water in the nether. Like, you know how fast water is on the overworld? Like, this is relatively fast. This might be something unique and interesting that some of you may not realize. That's like a decent pace to it. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and try it here and see if it has that same flow. Yeah, that's way slower. All right, Bastions. If you put soul torches in them, do the piglins all evacuate the premise? We're gonna use a variant of soul equipment and uh, we'll start with the soul campfire. Hello, gentlemen. Excuse me. Your lord and savior lover fellow is here. All right, well, I just burnt him. That was not what I was supposed to do. He didn't care. Hello, sir. Ooh, lantern. No, they are afraid of it. Okay, now let's see. What if you go in survival mode? All right, I wanna see if I can help you guys out. Piglins are coming. Oh no. Oh no, what do we do? We put down torches. That's what we do. Torches, lanterns. All right, well, I would say probably don't do that one. There's a myth that somewhere in Minecraft, there are nether villages. The first thing we have to do is locate biome and go to the warped forest. So it says if you enter deep inside of the warped forest and you look closely, you will see a nether village. Now, I don't spend a lot of time in these. I've never seen a village, and I, I would feel like I would have if it was real, but you never know. Oh, 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 what is that? Warped log, do they glow? Let's find out. Put it down in the ground. It does have a shimmer to it, which is kind of cool. Now, the Minecraft Ender Dragon head is an item that is rare. The question is, are, are nether mobs afraid of it? First, we'll try him. Probably not, it's like his dad. Are you scared of the dragon head? It doesn't seem like you are. It seems like you don't really care. Busted, busted, they don't care. Can you find mushrooms in every nether biome, even including the surface? Well, obviously they're in here, and I see some green ones in here, and some red ones in here. Are they on the surface? Like the actual top of the bedrock? Uh, oh, there are mushroom patches on the roof. Isn't that odd? Mojang never thought like, hey, maybe we should like not let this happen. They just said, we don't care for literally nope. generations, for years. Can netherwoods, are they unburnable? Oh, they are. If you drink a potion of fire resistance under the lava, do you instantly get x-ray? Seems like this one's been patched. It used to work, but it's a, it's a L now, guys. Does a golden axe break netherite quicker than a netherite pickaxe? Let us begin the test. Netherite pickaxe will go for five. 
Gold for five. Oh, gold is so much faster. Oh my god, I feel like I'm in creative mode. Look at this. All right, we saved the best for last, guys, to thank you for staying to the end of my videos. Here's the best this of the day. This one's a theory. The theory is the reason the golden tools do more is because in the nether, gold is valued more than netherite. That's why when you wear gold, you're not attacked. That's why all the items, all the mobs wear gold. The reason it does more damage is because they believe it's stronger. So maybe, maybe like piglins have like super belief powers. I don't know. Somehow they believe in it and it makes them stronger. The power of mindset, bro. I'm not sure, but maybe somehow the piglins have to do with gold being better than the netherite. Can you grow a regular tree in the nether? If I were to perhaps grab some grass and a jungle sapling and some bone meal, what would happen? It would grow a bone meal tree and it would work and it would be great. We know that we can't sleep in the nether, but can villagers? Oh, look at him. That's so crazy. Oh my God. I'm going to sleep with you boys. I'm so excited to come in and have a slump. All right. Let's test the rest over here. Do ruined nether portals spawn in the nether? I believe they do, but let's just confirm. Oh, ruined portal nether. Well, if it has its own name, then I would assume it does. Uh, yes, it does. Confirm. They do spawn in the nether. If you kill a piglin in one hit, does it not alert the rest of the herd? All right, let's try it. I'm going to go chill, try to kill just one. All right, that doesn't work. Busted. The warden is actually immune to fall damage, fire damage, knockback, powdered snow, and pretty much anything except for sword damage. Number one, we're going for fall damage. Why is he blue? Is that normal? That don't seem normal to me. All right, here we go. He does take fall damage. Okay, we're gonna retest that at the end because I need to see if I drop him from like world height if that'll kill him. Fall damage is a go. They do take fall damage. I don't know how much. Okay, fire damage. This should be pretty simple. Obviously, he's immune to fire. We're gonna try lava just to double check on her. No, he just swims out of it. Okay, definitely no fire damage. Don't be doing that. Knockback's gonna be difficult. Um, no, definitely no, definitely no. There's no knockback damage coming in. That's another red. So finally, we'll try powdered snow. Okay. Oh, it is. No, it's not. Is it? What? He's taking damage. Oh, dude, he is. Yo, powdered snow works. That's so easy. Okay, so powdered snow works. Oh, wait, I gotta put green. I said I would put green. I will put green. But to get the first one confirmed, we're gonna go all the way to world height. Here comes the warden. Here we go. Oh, God, he's quick. He's moving quick. Wow, I didn't kill him. So my question is, like, how much did it hurt him? Okay, basically fall damage is another red. It does basically nothing. The only one of these that works is the powdered snow, which is kind of awesome because I think you could definitely farm them or something. I don't know. Anyway, it works. Good myth, guys. Thank you for dropping a good myth. Unlike the first dude who said you could smelt tadpoles and rub tadpole paste on your body to attract villagers. Which one of you did that? Seriously, tell me. I'm... I don't remember. Moving on to our next myth, guys. It says you can find 20 diamonds minimum in the loot chests of an ancient city. We're gonna see if this is like a legit way to get stuff or if it spawns like infinite freaking demons to take our souls out. That can't be good. Oh God, watch out for that. I wouldn't, oh, there's a chest. Okay, that's not good sounding. Definitely no diamonds. She's hard early on. You know, she's very difficult. Okay, all right, all right. We definitely have a demon. I don't see any diamonds, man. This seems to not be the best strategy. Okay. But honestly, there were a lot of ways I thought that I would die and that didn't even cross my mind. I don't know, man, 20 minimum and I haven't even seen one yet. Seems a little absurd. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Imagine coming down here and you find a diamond hoe with efficiency five. Imagine that's what you get for risking your life. Ooh, this looks important. Wow, coal. Okay, I haven't even looked at all the chests yet and I already want to call it busted. There's probably a few more to look at, but our inventory, we haven't even seen one diamond. I find it hard to believe there would be 20. We got one more to look at back here though. This could be a 20 diamonds. Honestly, pretty thick chest. They really like the diamond hose down here. It's like they're trying to troll you. So this is what I've got. I collected every single chest that I could find and it was full of a lot of junk, some decent stuff, but really a lot of junk. There's no diamonds. You're not getting diamonds. Maybe you get diamond armor, if anything else. This doesn't seem like a myth, but it had a lot of upvotes and players seemed curious. Does wool actually silence your footsteps around the wardens? See, here's the thing I want to find out. Does carpet work as well as wool? Because it takes two of these to make three carpet, which means you're basically getting a free block. So what we're going to do, I need to find one of those little creatures. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, it might work. Oh God, okay, maybe, okay. Oh my God, that's not what I expected. Look at this, look at this. On the on the carpet, nothing. Off the carpet, shooting out little zingers. So it does work actually. You probably wanna use carpet instead of wool to block your sound if you can, because it's more efficient, especially if you're going through and using the last hack to try to collect infinite diamond hose, because that seems to be all we could collect for some reason. Tea break. 
Nah, this has nothing to do with wardens or anything. There's really no smooth way to transition to this, so I'll just do my best. Cats! Do they take fall damage in Minecraft or do they always land on their feet? Well, let's try the Ocelot because really this is a form of cat. I think, I honestly always thought this was a cat. So I don't really know the difference. Anyway, good luck, brother. Oh, look at that, it is a cat. So Ocelots don't take damage. Cats probably don't take damage. You know, uh, that is a little misleading, Mojang. To say we can't have fireflies because frogs would eat them and get poisonous, yet to allow a cat to fall from infinite height and take no damage, I just don't know if it's gonna make it. Okay, so earlier, like, well, early, probably like a minute ago for you, we tested something to see if you could get infinite diamonds in the deep dark and you couldn't. Okay, there's another new myth for 1.19, which says if you do locate Woodland Mansion, there's a new room that is solid diamond. I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds fake though. Okay, you know what would be easier if I actually just, we take the roof off, the whole thing, gone. Before I reveal this, I'm gonna do a little bet with you guys. There is no diamond room. And if there is, I'll delete my channel. Please God, don't be a diamond room in here. Oh, oh. You know, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but y'all tell me they didn't just kill a bunch of Steves and literally steal their clothes, make beds out of it, and sleep on the Steve bodies. That's all I'm saying. That's a suspicious colorway. Anyway, this one's busted. One of the newest myths, you can kill a warden by just simply dropping it into a five by five hole of water where he slowly suffocates to death. All right, we got some water in the hole right now. Okay, turns out, uh, turns out wardens are extremely buoyant creatures. I think the makeup of one of these might be like 50% helium. How is he so buoyant? Dude shoots up like a rocket. Hold on, I, I'm just, I gotta, I gotta see something. I'm gonna replace this all to water and just see if he actually rockets up this high because if he does, it would feel to me like Mojang specifically coded him to not be killed by water. Like, look at him. What if we seal it off though? I wonder if he even can drown. Yeah. <laughs> Mojang, y'all thought, y'all thought you could code it so it couldn't drown, but guess what? You didn't think about roofs, did you? That's why, that's why, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what I was gonna say. All right, next myth. They say Minecraft dogs are a player's best friend. If you're like me, you don't have any friends, so a Minecraft dog is all you have. I'm gonna call you Fido, buddy. I love you, Fido. You're the best dog I could ever ask for. Let's go, Fido. Let's go on an adventure together. Fido, help! A zombie! Oh! Fido, you're a hero. I love you so much. Let's go ahead and get you a home built, okay? Fido, look, buddy. I made you a new little home. We really have such a good connection, don't we? But the theory states that because it's your best friend, it has extra health when fighting for you against the warden. My guess? Dog dies in one punch and I go away more lonely than I thought possible. Good luck, Fido. You got this, buddy. Come on, Fido. No, Fido! No, Fido's gone! No, Fido! Oh no, but it actually, he, he, he withstood for two hits, so... Rest in peace, Fido. The answer, though, is he took two hits, and uh, now we're gonna join Fido. Because I am now depressed that I lost my dog. Fido, this is for you. That's right, buddy. Four hits. But the good news is, at least we get to see Fido now. Wait a minute. Where's Fido? I wasn't supposed to go here. So our next myth is actually really stupid. And it says goat horns make goats hostile to you. Um, do they? If I pop a couple G boys down, they're gonna come at me. What's up boys? What's up boys? I hate goats, but let's go ahead and try it. See if the, see if the G's come at me. Doesn't really seem like it. I wonder if I kill their babies though, if that'll do it. Someone's gotta answer the question. I mean, might as well be me, you know? Yeah, these goats are pretty impartial. They don't seem to care a whole lot about things, so. Seem pretty cool. Goats are pretty chill, to be honest. All right. I'm literally using your horn to make music and burn your baby, but hey, busted. So we all know, or at least most of us know, that if a frog kills a magma cube, depending on the color of the frog, you get a different colored frog light. Right, he just spits it out, poops it out his butt. Basically, my question is, what happens if you put a bunch of frogs and a bunch of magma cubes down? The myth says the game lags, the frogs fight each other, and uh, there's just like some weird glitches associated with this. So here's all of our frogs. So the theory is like the frog tongues are supposed to hit the other frogs on accident, creating a giant chaos of frogs eating each other. You know, I wonder if the reason frogs can jump is because they eat magmas and the baby magmas are in their stomach jumping. And each time a frog jump, it says actually the baby magma jumping in their stomach. That's a theory. <clears throat> well, I feel like I'm watching paint dry here. Not a lot's going on. They dropped regular frog lights. That's it. It's cool though. Actually, it's not. It's not cool. I don't know why I said that. 
Okay, this one requires us to open up Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This is a myth for the ages. This is a myth that the Nordic Vikings would have used in order to survive back in the day. Actually, it has nothing to do with that, but it felt like a really good, like, hype-up story for this. Basically, if a charge creeper kills a stray, a wither skeleton skull is dropped, which could be beneficial because wither skeleton skulls can be difficult to get. But now that I think about it, a charge creeper and a stray killing each other seem way unlikely, and I don't know if the odds of this happening are very high, so, hmm, interesting. This would be a very complicated thing to create. Like, to be honest with you, I don't know how someone's going to have this kill this without you dying, but we're gonna try it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Get him, get him. Okay, so it did kill me, but it also killed the stray. I don't see any drops, but we're right by spawn, I believe. You see, the thing about this one is, I don't know if it's a guarantee each time. Obviously, the stray died. I don't see a wither skull, but to me, it just seems real. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels truthful. And I don't know why. It didn't work. I don't know if it works, but something in me feels like, yeah, this works. So even though it didn't work, I'm gonna say it worked just because it feels like it does. Don't know how that makes sense, but it do. I told you guys there were some really weird myths today in today's video. Myths that were just made you kind of go, hmm, something's wrong with that guy. And uh, this is one of them. The guy said that the easiest way to kill the warden is to throw a hundred eggs at it. You know what? The fact that it's doing damage actually... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've thrown eggs for so long that it is now dark and there's just chicken scattered for miles. It's not a hundred. I, I imagine it's possible over a hundred, but there's this thing called time and I don't have infinite time. So no, I'm not gonna test this to see the exact number of eggs that need spawned unless one of you drops that as a comment today and we have to test that in the next video because my producer thinks, sees it and thinks it will be funny to make me do it. Uh, by the way, I, wanna, I do wanna take a moment here to say something very important, all right? There's a couple people out there I do need to shout out today and specifically, it's everyone that relies on the state of North Dakota. If you're there, I feel like you guys don't get that that attention. You know what I mean? North Dakota, shout out to all you guys out there. If you want to be shouted out, subscribe or something or whatever. I don't know.